KLYC, The Cruise, and we call this uh, Live After Five. And what we want to do with the radio station is uh, engage the Internet and engage you, the audience. In fact, if you drive by the Blue Quail, you can honk your horn, you can wave. And, uh, if you, you know, we're also, one of the things we're going to be doing is giving away tie-dye T-shirts and zero-waste shopping bags. What? I didn't yes. say. I, I sprung that on you at the last minute. Okay. You've got to have some surprises, right? So like, okay. like during during this hour, you're going to be giving away those things. Yeah. People can walk by the blue quail, and we'll tell them what the blue quail is. Okay. We don't have birds for sale, or you don't have birds for Do you have birds for sale? I do have birds in paintings. No, I don't. No, no birds for sale. No live birds for sale. No animals. No, no an live animals. No, no live animals. Sorry. Okay, what, what a Live After Five is, is we're going to be taking the radio station on the road. We call it Street Level Radio. So we, are, are true to that name, we want to be on the street. Make sure you wave as you drive by. And uh, this is local radio. This is what we like to do. That's why we're out driving in the van all day. And at 5 o'clock, we find a place to land, and we're going to have some fun. Next Wednesday, guess where we're going to be? Where? We are going to be in the in the Spruce Goose oh. with Spruce Goose Bruce, who is the expert of Spruce Goose oh, at the Evergreen God. Aviation Space Museum, live video stream, and also a live radio broadcast. So you're going to learn all things Spruce Goose nice. from nice. Spru Spruce Goose Bruce. Okay. Wow. That almost sounds like what we were trying to do, this tongue twister, the walking walrus wearing wings. Oh, I we said it really well. I know. When I thought about it, I was like, walking walrus wearing wings. Okay, so blue quail. <laughs> Back to the script. Blue quail. What is the blue quail? We're here with Amanda Powanka, who you're coming up on your first year anniversary of the blue quail. Oh, my gosh, yes. Can I? Yes, yeah. Can. Um, Take it away. Yeah, so I can't believe it's almost It's almost a year. A year, July 1st, will be a year that will, be, will have been opened. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, I know everyone has been telling me, that everyone and their dog has been saying, well, the first two years of business are the hardest. You know, you don't make any money until year three, you know, that kind of thing. And um, by golly, that's just so encouraging. <laughs> but I mean, you know, they're telling the truth. This is the same kind of thing when you have a baby and everyone wants to give you advice about your baby. And you're like, I don't know you. you but anyway, it's... <laughs> You, exactly. You don't start making money on your baby. <laughs> no. Wow. Um, but <laughs> wow, that got dark. Um, so anyway, <laughs> um, no. So I've been I've been in business coming up on a year now, and wow, I've been learning a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff because I did not take any business classes when I was at George Fox. I graduated from George Fox in 2008 with a art minor I'm sorry whoa wow. art major <laughs> hello um and but didn't take any business classes I don't have any business background I just dove in head first and I worked with a couple girls in North Carolina when I was there who had their own business but um coming to McMinnville I definitely was just like yeah let's do this so it's been a year of, yeah, let's do this. Well, <laughs> and do I've what? met what some people. I've met some people along the way, like my new friend, Stephanie. And I mean new as in, like, she came on um, as an artist last year. And this is why she's here. She's one of my artists. Hello. Hello, everybody. It's and Stephanie Sherman. Stephanie Sherman. <laughs> and Stephanie, how would you talk about what you do oh. here? Well, you know, I stumbled into the blue quail when it was very new. It was about only a month old, month to two months you had been open. And I have been a hobbyist candle maker all my life. And before you opened the store, I had decided, you know, I keep giving all of these candles away to my friends. And the shipping cost was getting, it, it was too much. I couldn't afford to gift any yeah. that many candles anymore. And so I decided, you know, well, there's a store in town that's doing consignment for local artists. And I came in that day, and he let me come down and bring my candles in. And for me, being a new to the art scene of actually crafting your own art, I did not go to school. It's just, you know, a home hobby turned into something that I got really good at. And having the ability to have a store that's already set up mm -hmm. that – I don't have to run. I mean, I have a regular job. I'm you know, very busy at work, but then being able to sell my candles here and get the exposure when it helps me start 
uh, making capital to start it on my own as well and and to start you know creating my own website so the store i think is pivotal to being able to help local artists get get on their feet and and learn a bit what it's like to have to service you know is my art selling did you know is somebody going to actually buy it from the store and something like this is a really good segue to going into an art business and creating your own art business on your own yeah. and so you know, thank you thank you thanks and so we became best friends forever okay but i do have to say though the first time you came into the shop you were not alone you came into the shop with a giant T-Rex costume person behind oh. you, like giving me a flyer for something else, totally and completely. And so that's the first time I met Stephanie was she came in and then someone was following her with a giant T-Rex costume. And she's like, hi! And <laughs> anyway. A T-Rex stalker. No, 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 the T-Rex wasn't stalking her. <laughs> I was doing a promotion event on 3rd Street, and I had I had paid a friend to wear a T-Rex costume. <laughs> so people would come over and take uh, pictures, and I would hand them a flyer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah anyway, that, that was my first interaction with her. Okay, so rewind. So if you have any questions about the blue quail, you can text the station, 503-472-1260, and we'll ask Amanda about the blue quail. What now, was that number again? 503 503 472 472 1260 1260 right. That makes yeah. sense, doesn't it? 503 472 1260. When you say the same phone number there they go. Multiple times a day, you have a habit of saying it too fast, you know. That's um, why you were slowing me down. What do we have? Do we need passwords? For to send a the question? Wi-Fi for the Wi-Fi. No. Okay. <laughs> because we're already on. We are on the air. We're already on the air. So if you have any questions about the blue quail, you can text KLYC 503-472-1260. So you can sign work for local artists? Is that one of the things you do? Yeah. So here's the thing that lots of people don't know, but I'm a like multi-level business in, in terms of I do a lot of stuff here. So the first thing is, is you walk through the doors and it's a shop. It's a consignment shop. I do art. There's crafts like pottery um, that kind of falls under the heading of craft versus um, <laughs> and candles. It's basically usable art, right? It's it's stuff that people put their heart and soul into, but that you can use for something versus hanging a picture on a wall. Um, and then the you you keep coming back through the store, and there are these gorgeous tables that my husband made out of reclaimed uh, lumber. And this is where we do our paint nights. So we have our own boutique, but then we do paint nights every Friday night and sometimes from Saturday. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> you no, guys I me up. <laughs> every Friday night from 7 to 9. And sometimes Saturdays, yes. Um, you can find the events calendar on our website, McMinnvilleBlueQuail.com. And then you move to the back half, the back third of the store, in which we are actually remodeling. I'm going to turn into more of a bar. Yeah, yeah that way. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah, that will hopefully be done by the end of July. We'll, we'll have a bar. And not a hard alcohol bar, just a wine, beer and cider bar, and a DIY bar. See, that's the other thing that people do not understand and do not know because I have not spent a lot of money and time advertising. But you can come in anytime we're open and do an arts and crafts project with your kids, with your friends, with your family, doesn't matter. Come in anytime we're open and do a painting, a craft, a little. Paint a rock. I particularly like painting rocks. How many rocks have you painted now? I've painted five rocks now, and it's very, you know what? I come here and I help out mm -hmm. when Amanda is in a, oh, thank you, in an emergency case, and I'll help watch the store for her. Yeah. And I paint rocks, and it's the best decompression after work, a stressful day all day, and I sit here and create, and it's, it's coming. Oh, oh. We're, here. we're on radio. <laughs> Nobody can see that. <laughs> but it's so small. It was just this little hairline. <laughs> Focus. So after you, so as far as de-stressing, after you paint the rocks, you don't necessarily throw them, do you? No. no. I have a rock garden now in my backyard, and so I keep adding and adding to my rock garden. Yay. Um, 
It's just nice, just a little, you know, you can maybe put anywhere. I'll get I've, a water feature later and put the walks those, around it. Um, have you seen those rocks around uh, where people specifically like paint them and, and hide them? In parks and, and on places. hiking trails. And, and hiking stuff like trails, that. yeah. You know what? That would be a good idea. You could start painting blue quail rocks and, and be like, if you find this on a trail, come in and you can get a discount on, on a paint <laughs> night. Dude, that's I, a really good idea. <laughs> that, that's a very good idea. That's a very fun, whimsical, I love it idea slash I give people coupons in their face and they don't bring them back in. I'm just saying. But I believe <laughs> but in But I people. really like that idea. <laughs> So that idea is now copyrighted. <laughs> Can't use it. If you do, you have to pay royalties. So DIY art. You can walk it off the street right now. First of all, your hours of operation, when are you open? Oh, gosh. I don't know. No. <laughs> <laughs> take, take a shot. Take a shot. Well, right now, for the, end, for the rest of the month of June, which is, what, two weeks now, um, Wednesday, Thursday, noon to 6 Thir uh, Friday, Saturday, 11 to 6. But I am going to be changing my hours in July um, because I'm a mother of three and I want to be at home with my kids and they don't want to be stuck at this store all day. Um, <laughs> oh, come on. Well, I mean, it is fun, but, you know, there's only how so much, much you can do. How yeah. much art can you feed a kid all day, <laughs> right? Right? <laughs> am I right? <laughs> But anyway, uh, <laughs> so the hours will change in July. And All right. So how much tuned. How much does it cost to come in off the street and do your own art? So that's a great question. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do we have a great answer? Um, absolutely. Uh, so I've got um, watercolor sheets for $3. That's the cheapest we will go. And the watercolor sheets are great because you can – obviously do watercolor painting on it but you can do so much more you can do collage you can create a card you can do all sorts of stuff see the the beautiful thing is is that i have all of the supplies that you will ever need to to complete you know a project and so you're what you're really paying for is you're paying for someone else to clean up after you you're paying for the supplies and you're paying for a space to do arts and crafts in so you can do arts and crafts and not mess up your front room. Exactly. And it's the best for kids, right? You come in, you bring your child, they color for a half an hour while mom gets a glass of wine. I do sell beer, wine, and cider throughout the day. Um, it's not just a... It's not just for my paint events. Um, it's anytime you can walk in and just have a beer and sit out on our outdoor tables if you want, which are gorgeous. And everyone is like, I want to buy your table. And I'm like, hey, why don't you just buy a beer and sit at them? My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> like, I want my tables. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Maybe if they're at 1882 is across the street. So have you ever thought about doing daycare for people while they enjoy at 1882? That's I think the word daycare used at this it's point scary. is a little bit dangerous, actually, yeah. as far as licensing. Yeah. You know, I mean, really even saying the word daycare. So, <laughs> no. so scratch that idea. <laughs> this is a, an art you know, store. A parent probably would definitely need to be present at least <laughs> to be able to watch the kids. Or if you're going to bring and have a birthday party here, there does need to be some adult supervision. I will say, though, this, yes. summer, this summer I am doing... Uh, everything Stephanie said was absolutely 100% correct. But this summer I'm doing uh, kid camps. So um, they are three days, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday camps during the week, one-hour sessions. Um, you can drop your child off at that for an hour. Um, but I, I have my BA in art from George Fox University major, <laughs> not a minor. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> I've been teaching for over two and a half years, um, doing the paint nights, but then I've also taught, I'm a Girl Scout, a lifer Girl Scout. So that, um, for other Girl Scouts, y'all, you know, I'm OG. Um, you know what I mean, boo. Uh, and then what else? Uh, I've taught many, many classes throughout the years when I was at Fox in high school and all this stuff. So my point in all that is I'm an awesome teacher. I know that sounds like I'm tooting my own horn, but I kind of have to, right? Uh, Very you modest. You toot my horn for me. 
I'll let you continue. Okay. To, uh, <laughs> I'll toot right after. I have okay. some additions. So oh, okay. Go ahead. Okay. So anyway, my point in saying this is, is bring your kids to the camp, and that is the only place that you can, in fact, drop your child off for an hour. How much does that cost? So that is sixty-four dollars for the camp. That's uh, and that includes materials. So three one-hour sessions. Let's back up. When we're talking about do your own art and they want to come in for an hour and just paint something or do watercolor or whatever, how much does that cost? Does that depend on the cost of materials? Well, the watercolor thing, I started. that's $3, right? Um, the most expensive th I thing I have on the DIY shelf, honestly, is the $12 wood blocks. So, I mean, we're talking very, you know, very affordable. Um the best part about it, it, honestly, to me, is, like, you can make your own little homemade card and drink a beer at the same time. You know, it's it's that relaxed, like, hey, let's just do arts and crafts because we need to get out of the house, you know? <laughs> and, you know, Father's Day is coming up. Yeah. there. See, yes. This is why I hired you. No, yeah. <laughs> You can come down not, here I and hire him. <laughs> you can come down here and make a Father's Day card. There, you know, right. on Saturday, the, this Saturday, come yeah. down, and you know we can. You can make a, sa a Father's Day card. Oh, oh, thank you. Yeah. You can make a Father's Day <laughs> card, and you know, get out of the house. And I think that's one of the key things here. Is you know your kids do art at home. You do art at home, maybe, or you can learn learn art. But getting out of the house. More often, doing right. it outside. Not even about the cleanup, but I love coming here just to, okay, I'm going to just get out of the house for a while. Um, I did want to add on to the do-it-yourself projects. Um, there has been a few people, me being one of them, that I've had a big project that I wanted to do. The, my curtains. Oh my gosh, yes. And I didn't have, I, I had took advantage of Amanda's sales. She was selling uh, all this, the thrift shop. Um, of art, fabric. of art, and I had gotten a bunch of fabric, and I wanted to make curtains, and I had not enough room at my house, so I coordinated with Amanda, and I came down here and brought all my supplies here, and these tables are so big mm -hmm. that I was able to spread out my curtains. Great! I glued this design of yarn on there, and they turned out really beautiful. And that's another opportunity that even if it's not a do-it-yourself thing that Amanda is providing at the store, right. you can go, well, you know, if I don't have a big enough table, I know something's down there, and come down, again, buy a beer or a cider or a wine, and come and bring your supplies down here. Yeah. That was fun, too. I yeah. had fun helping you. That was really fun. So what's your Facebook page, website, phone number, all the ways that people can contact you? Thank you for <laughs> being on that. We're walking you Oh, my this. gosh. Okay. So... First of all, my Facebook is The Blue Coil. My Instagram, which I do very funny stories. Um, I, I, I do serious stuff like 20% of the time, and it's just showing off product. Most of the time, it's just me dinking around and having fun. Um, it's just The Blue Coil, you know, Instagram, The Blue Coil. Um, and then, but my website, that's the kind of difference. My website is McMinnville bluequail.com and the reason for that is i looked at you know when i was building my website i of course wanted the bluequail.com but it's gone because someone in england has a restaurant called the blue quail but they're out of business and they haven't even like taken away their website you know, it, it doesn't exist anymore, but they're just, like, hanging on to this website name. How dumb is that? Oh, yeah. Anyway. So I just decided, you know, McMinnville. Yeah, well, <laughs> McMinnville Blue Quail. You know, on the McMinnville Blue Quail website calendar, I think one of the best features on that website is the ability to go to the calendar and see which painting that she has up there on the calendar to sign up for it. Mm -hmm. And you can see what she'll be teaching you to paint. And I love that because you can go in there and be like, oh, the haystack, the Oregon haystack ocean scene is going to be in two weeks. I'm going to start working and getting some friends together so we can all come down and do a painting. So I think really utilizing her McMinnville calendar, the, the McMinnville Blue Quail 
dot com and then go to the calendar link, you can see what uh, pictures that yeah. you can paint. Yeah, and I I did recently change it. It's it is a calendar, um, but it, the you click on the events. Okay. It's just called events. Um, and then I also this is kind of fun and something I never get to talk about, but I do have a blog. It's called Artist and Chef blog and it's on the calendar it's i'm sorry <laughs> you kept saying calendar so it's in my brain it's on the website <laughs> and it's um called artist and chef blog and there are recipes on there there's diy videos like how to make your own headboard how to dye fabric like really fun stuff when i was in north carolina that's what we lived there for two years um we are born and bred oregonians but um when i was in north carolina that's where this whole idea of starting my own business um was birthed it was birthed in north carolina <laughs> Um, and it started with a blog called Artist and Chef, and Artist and Chef, because I'm the artist and my husband's a chef. And so I, that's where we've got our recipes, we've got our fun stuff, we've got some um, videos, like I said. And it's just a, yeah, it's our blog. And you should go there, and then you should click the pin it buttons and, like, pin all your stuff on Pinterest. Because, you know, Pinterest is awesome. Have you been on Pinterest? You know, I don't really discover Pinterest that much. I made an account, and I try not to get too absorbed into too many apps on my cell phone. Well, I just get on there on my laptop, and I'm like, oh, my goodness gracious, what can I find today? And I turn into a weird southern person. But you know what? For me, I just I like coming to the Blue Quail and seeing what you have here, because then I can just take it home immediately yeah if you're like i don't want to make any i don't want to make candles i'll just buy oh wait, wait i minute, do hey, make candles <laughs> <laughs> no but seriously have you been on my blog yet i actually did browse your blog and i'm I, I'm, I'm scared that you just asked me that because I, I noticed it hadn't been updated in quite some time, to be honest no, with I you. Have not, I have not written an article in a long time. So now here's your courage to go jump back into it since you're, you're, you're marketing it. You're going to have to do another update. This is true. I need to do something. I made some bread the other day. Oh, my gosh. Bread. Well, but... <laughs> Right, <laughs> but it was gluten free. Okay, so but you can't make bread here. <laughs> no, at the blue quail. Let's blue just quail. make sure. We no, no, no. This is my this is my next blog post. Okay, failed gluten free bread. Okay, um, it was delicious. Don't get me wrong. The bread was delicious, but the flour that I used, I made my own mixture, and it was buckwheat, um, so a little bit of rice flour. And almond meal. And it, <laughs> if anyone is listening out there right now who is a gluten-free bread know-it-all, they're shaking their head right now. <laughs> they're like, no, honey, uh-uh. Because there's not enough, um, well, <laughs> gluten. There's not enough uh, stickiness in those three flours to hold the bread together. Mothers okay? don't try this at home. No, mothers do not try this at home. Uh, the rice, the rice is the only thing in there that has any kind of stickiness, any kind of gluten in it. Um, and so, long story short, my bread just crumbled. It was like, it was delicious, it tasted good, it was this apple cinnamon bread that I made with fresh apples, it was so good! Um, but, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like literally I would cut it and it literally fell apart. So, do you want some bread? <laughs> Looking at you, Steph. You know, I'm thinking that that would be even, it, you could turn it into croutons and it'd be okay. I, I don't know. It, it, it just sounds like it'd be good over like yogurt or. I'm going to just straight up and get some sourdough because I, I eat gluten. <laughs> I eat gluten. I try to cut back here and there. I am not aller allergic, would you be? Allergic? Yeah. Um, I love bread. Wait, wait. What? What is happening right now? Oh, human, human rights, rights for, for detainees. They're doing, <gasps> um, what they're doing right now in town, we have a lot of people coming down the street and they are doing a walk because they want to support, uh, children, uh, not being turned, uh, oh, turn. I say turn, he's turning the camera. They're supporting the human rights for detainees because oh. of the whole thing about, um, 
children being taken away from their parents oh, at the yeah. border. Yep. So right now, McMinnville is is in solidarity, walking um, and showing support that they cannot take children away from parents at the border. So I just heard the NPR. I was listening to. I was riveting. I was listening to the NPR thing about it, and it. These mothers, three mothers mm -hmm. from uh, Bolivia, came over to the border. Or some Central American country. I'm sorry, I can't remember which oh one. My goodness. Okay. Dang it! <laughs> Failing. Anyway, no. The point is, is that they came in over the border, and you know they got caught. Uh -huh. But the issue that had never happened before until that time is that they actually took their children away and flew them. To New York City. Flew them, meaning who? The kids? The children. They took the children away from the moms and flew them to New York City. And like the, the, the moms stayed where they were taken, but the kids got flown all the way to New York City. When, and it was it's like a California like border crossing? Texas. 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 Yeah. And uh, anyway, yeah, here you go, Dave. So there must be, how many people do you think are in this march? There must be 100? At, at least 100. At yeah. least 100. And they're still going by. We took their pictures and they were on our video stream. That's kind of, I, there's some people in there I recognize too. Wow. So uh, one of the, let's everybody wave. Let's everybody wave. <laughs> yeah, um, so so one of the interesting things about live radio and live video stream and kind of a live after five is that's kind of what we want. We want, if it happens, it's, it it's there. It it's on the air. It's on the street. It's on the air. It's online. And that that guy over there, look at he's got a camera. He's walking yeah. with them with a, a video camera there. I wonder what's a what's a nice camera. That's a, like a news camera. It's a good camera. Anyway. Yeah. So then, oh, look, this they're is, looking at my art. Oh. Yeah. Well, go go trip somebody and they'll buy something. <laughs> so. Uh, it's blue quail, and uh, it's the blue quail, and you, she honestly, she won't trip you when you come in here, but if you want to buy something, okay, she will. Uh, for the live, video, uh, the live video stream that, uh, by the way, if there's some buffering issues when you're watching, watching this, it's been a long day, sorry, then uh, we will have the recorded video posted later on a number of places, according to our website, klyc.us, klyc radio on Facebook, and, of course, your website. Yeah, McMinnville Blue Quail. Yeah, and we're in, the blog. in, in, the, in a minute. We're going to be spinning the camera around and take a look at some of the art. Yeah, I'm going to show you what's up. I'm going to show you what we got, and I'll show you the not newly remodeled space, the space that will be remodeled. It's the Blue Quail getting close to celebrating its first anniversary. Congrat congratulations. Thank you. If you want to do, do do your own art, if you want to come in here and just uh, learn how to paint the sunset, the haystack mm -hmm. in Oregon, the check the website and see when that's going to happen. And uh, you don't even need to bring a paintbrush. No, you don't. I have all the materials. It's called the Blue Quail. So now if you wondered what the Blue Quail was, you now know. Yay. Mystery solved. Mystery is solved. You never know what's going to happen at the Blue Quail. It could we be protests. It could be anything. I know, right? We got a real life Sherlock over here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any okay. closing thoughts? Um, it's been a it's been a journey. Um, if we're getting real right now, I would love more. Just just uh, love and appreciation from people, and, and that sounds so like. Oh, I hate I it's hate okay. saying I hate Keep saying going. that, but seriously, it's like if you want me around, you gotta share the you love. You gotta show up. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> a, a phrase. <laughs> but but they usually you usually don't have protesters here. No, oh, that's true. We don't have protesters. No, but the point is, is that um, if you if you love what I do, if you love um, what I'm trying to do. Talk about it, you know, let people know, let people know that I'm here. My, my best mode of advertising is word of mouth. Absolutely. Hands down. Um, because everyone trusts their friend, right? And if their friend had a good time here, you're going to have a good time here. So, um, tell people about me. Um, if you're listening or watching, hi, and you've had like a legit good experience, then please let your friend know so that they will come and have a good experience. Hello, friend. Hi. I've actually had wonderful experiences here. I've, I've done several paint nights and not just being a contributing artist that 
that just because I'm one of the the persons doing the art and selling it here, I actually very much enjoy the paint nights. And Amanda, you truly are a good teacher. Thank you. And I'm not just trying to fluff your buttons. Well, I like fluffing buttons. <laughs> because I would tell you. <laughs> and, you know, it's nice because now I have an opportunity that every painting in my house is something that I've done on my own okay. with your help. So thank you. I appreciate your store being here. I think it's a really good addition to the community. It's something different. And it is all-inclusive. You know, you, there's so many different things to do here. You can have a group come here and somebody's going to do paint, painting. Someone might be, hey, I don't want to paint a picture. I want to paint a rock. Oh, snap. That's, that's what I do. I got you, boo. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the other thing, too, is that... Um, Hi, yeah, it's, a oh, it's a picture time. Um, yeah, if you just want to just chill and have a drink, you can do that. You're kind of fun to hang out with sometimes. Well, gosh, golly darn things, friend. But make sure to call ahead and that 70 Sherman is here because you'll really have a good time. Yeah. Word up. Oh, wait, that didn't. No. Oh, uh, um. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> kids, what she meant is she was painting pictures. Yeah. Of dinosaurs and T Rexes and and all that good Actually, stuff. Yes, I do have a yes. how to draw dinosaurs book. And I think that is a good time right now to plug um, coming down here for the one year anniversary. Because what are we going to be doing down here on your one year anniversary? We're going to be doing origami, uh, origami all day. Um, we're going to have live music um, at six by yours truly. I'm a um, musician. What and is that? That's June 30th. Oh, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we're going to have... Okay, so here's the fun part. Anytime during the day, anytime you walk in, you're going to be entered into a raffle to win prizes. So that's awesome. And then um, origami all day, like I already said. And then at 5, we're going to start the appetizers. Um, we're going to start live music at 6. And... Oh, my gosh, the most important thing. Y'all get one free drink when you come in, which is going to be cranberry lime white wine spritzers. Nice. Okay. All right. Oregon origami here. Yeah, and lots of cranes and birds. Because if you make a crane or a bird with your origami, you can hang it up in my chandelier, my new installation that I'm going to be doing for the summer. Come on down. Blue quail on 3rd Street, 3rd and... And Galloway. Third and Galloway. This is a live after five. Be listening for our next broadcast coming up Wednesday. We're going to be at the Spruce Goose. Uh, talking to Spruce Goose Bruce about all things Spruce Goose. Did you know the Spruce Goose, a lot of aircraft have three backup systems. Do you know how many backup systems the Spruce Goose has? D ten. Tell me. Five. What? Five. I going to say Five. Five. And all the things Spruce Goose, we'll find out about it. We'll do a live video shoot in there and on the radio, and we'll find out about the Spruce Goose, which is McMinnville's one of the many McMinnville's claim to fame. Okay, yes, so what? can I say something? So the thing about the blue quail is that we're on Galloway, and I'm just going to say something kind of funny. Um, this block between Ford and Galloway, it's got the the hardware building that's being updated right now. It has... The bike shop, it's got the bead store. My point is, it's kind of like this weird dead zone that M McMinnvilleites are like, there's nothing past Ford. Well, guess what? There is something past Ford, and it's my shop, and it's on Galloway. And it's okay to walk down one extra block to my shop. Okay, It's more than okay. It is great. Okay, Alive After Five. If you have an idea about something we need to do about Alive After Five, let me know about it. Send it to Dave at klyc.us, and uh, we'll see if we can put it in the schedule. AM 1260 KLYC, it's street-level radio. We're looking for ways to be on the street, be engaged with you, and this is live radio and live video. It's the new media, KLYC Media, here in McMinnville, and it is high time. We It's 545, so let's take a look at sports. They're looking at us from outside, and I think they're waving. We'll have to go out and sell You'll have to go sell them some art. This is KLYC, time for sports, live after 5. Okay, now we're back on the video feed. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Now, did you want to show folks some art? Yes, of course. I would love to show some folks some art. 
And Stephanie's candles. Oh. oh. All right, let's do this. So. Okay, yeah, girl. <laughs> All right, friends. Are you going to be mobile? Are you good? All right. So what we got here is um, a lot of local art. I represent over 20 local artists and craftspeople. Um, and then I do some filler stuff with estate sale finds. This is a perfect example. These beautiful candlesticks and um, napkins. Like, if you know anyone, this is the very last. I had seven of these, okay? This is the very last one with a date, 1973. If you know anyone who has a birthday in 1973 or an anniversary, that's the very last linen uh, wall hanging or napkin or whatever you want to call it. Okay. But so all the fillers, that's where I find them. Everyone else is from um, McMinnville, Newburgh. I have two people from Portland, um, but everyone else is from McMinnville, Newburgh. And here are the beautiful Stephanie Sherman candles. The thing I love about Stephanie Sherman candles, Sherman candles, um, is that you can tell that they've been hand poured. And how I mean by that is she takes the time to put them on their sides, right? If you if you get candles from Yankee Candles or candles from Target, whatever, it's just like just a big old pour. Well, these are handcrafted. Like they're all different colors. Like she took the time to wait for each color to dry, and they smell great. And one last thing about their candles is that um, they last forever. And I'm not going to tell you why. You have to come into the shop and ask me. Okay. What else we have? Okay, so we've got some art from Ashley Rice. She is a local by way of uh, Alaska. Ashley Rice, right here. The poppies. She asked me what people like, and I said people like poppies. So paint some poppies. Um, we have the beautiful Jennifer uh, Rose. She has her own studio in New York called Blue Plume Studio. These are her, some of her paintings. She was my featured artist last year. Um, she has some amazing stuff. She did. She up. She does upcycled furniture, and um, she painted these glass bottles. It's just very fun. At her studio, she has two peacocks, like real live male and female peacocks. Pretty awesome. And then we're gonna move along to actually my series. Um, it's called Portraits of the Heart, and they are actual portraits of people's hearts. Um, they're like, it's a series about how to describe a condition of someone. For example, I'm just going to take this right off the wall so that you can see what I'm talking about. This is um, a wood canvas um, with acrylic paint. It's called Married. And if you can see that, it's two hearts becoming one. So that's the kind of thing that I'm talking about. They're portraits of people's hearts um, in various psychological stages. This one, this little guy, is called Bleeding Love. Um, I My concentration at George Fox was mixed media. Mixed media is my jam. I love it so much. So I don't know if you can see, but these are threads I sewed through the um, heart there, and it's representative of blood. So bleeding heart is, you know, kind of that person who loves someone so much or something so much that it takes a part of them, maybe in a good way, maybe in a bad way. I, I honestly, the funny thing is, is when I look at this piece that I did, I think of teachers. I think of teachers and their classrooms and their class, their their children, and how they legit give so much of themselves. And teachers are so underappreciated. And the two Miss Allens who taught my kids last year, Ashley Allen and Jennifer Allen, you guys are amazing. And this is for you. All right. So, the my number one uh, artist who I love so much, she is from West Lynn, B 
by way of oh, oh state by way of Poland can you is everything okay um, is Paulina Archimbald she's amazing she's um, she was born in Poland uh, she studied in Paris and her pieces are just honestly haunting and beautiful all wrapped in one it's kind of amazing how she's able to do that um, they're like these weird like Oh, you kind of pause. You're like, do I like that? Yes, I love that. Oh, my gosh. Um, this is Girl with Blue Dress. Um, and the the thing I love about her pieces, too, is that they, they just give off this guttural kind of, I need to have that painting. All the people who have ever bought her pieces out of my shop, it's always been like a, yes, I want that, give it to me now kind of thing. It's, it's, it's always this guttural kind of visceral response to her, her paintings, and I love that so much. I've got some beautiful, moving on, sorry, from Paulina. Um, I've got these amazing illustrations from, there we go, uh, from Andrew Lavender. He is a local from McMinnville. Um, he has these beautiful illustrations printed. These are uh, very affordable if you just want a really beautifully drawn um, animal. Um, gosh, we've got a lot of stuff here. I mean, I could talk forever. I've got soaps. I've got wine stoppers made in the guy's garage because he's a wood turner. I've got beautiful wood bowls. Um from local Matthew Jensen who finds the wood in like people's backyards and and I mean this is the stuff that you go to other countries for right you go to other countries looking for amazing wood bowls but you don't have to because you can come to my shop and you can get these amazing wood bowls so and then we've got oh last but not least and I do need to shout out to Jennifer Joy I'm gonna come around gonna come around because the or not nope can i ah. technical difficulties oh we got it awesome we've got beautiful beautiful soap look at that wow some gorgeous soaps from mother daughter team i know you guys can't smell that but it smells amazing made with essential oils. So, um, Jennifer Joy, she and I went to George Fox together. Um, she is a potter and now she teaches at George Fox, which is amazing. Um, do you see the, the craftsmanship in, do you see the stamp, the, that marking? She makes her own stamps and plugs it into the clay before firing it. So it's it's a huge process. And then also, like, these are her tea bowls, which double as um, cocktail glasses. She's got her whiskey container here with her two shot glasses, which are so beautiful. And then she has these gorgeous mugs. I mean, everything she does is amazing. And I love that I can just call her up and be like, hey, Jennifer, make something for me. Hi. <laughs> I was just like, you're zoomed in on that truck. <laughs> but yeah, T-Bowl. <laughs> there we go. Ah, yeah. <gasps> oh my gosh. Mary just sent me more of them. Oh my goodness. Okay. These are awesome. Let me come up closer. Here we go. So you can, yes. So the backlight. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you. There we go. So I've got this new artist. Her name is Mary Carl, and she is just the sweetest thing on two legs. She's this um, older lady. So amazing. And she makes these grocery sacks. Um, she sews them out of coffee bags that she gets from Flag & Wire, a local coffee roaster. Um, they are impeccable. Like, they're the highest quality so awesome. She even puts these loops on so that you can hang them onto the back of things. Um, but they're just so amazing. They're only $20, you guys. And um, you can 
pick them up here and go grocery shopping with them. But I love that she uses the coffee bags from Flag and Wire. And that's so awesome. So anyway, that's what I got. Yeah, so um, Facebook, The Blue Quail. Um, Instagram, The Blue Quail. Um, website, McMinnvilleBlueQuail.com. And I love you all, and I hope you visit me soon. And there are so many more artists that I would love to talk about, but we just don't have time. Um, and my hours right now are Wednesday, Thursday, noon to 6, and Friday, Saturday, 11 to 6. Okay, so I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye.